you do the same thing. As many people as you can, tell them the presence of God in me. Bless is the presence of God in you.
If this is all right, Sony Pictures Television, she's also the author of the national bestsellers, Say What You Mean and Mean What You Say and Dare to Take Charge. Oh, I love that one. Most recently, Judge Hatchett, Judge Hatchett returned to TV in her television count ser court series, TV Verdict, sorry, The Verdict. She presides over the series as a follow-up to her Sony TV's long-running Judge Hatchett show. The verdict marks Entertainment Studios' sixth current court series on the Justice Central TV. And so we thank you once again for being with us. Yeah. And so you're going to hear from Judge. She's going to bring the message this morning. And so I've, I did your introduction now. So after the music, you're going to be set up to just come on up and do your thing. All right. And we are also, uh, and we invite everyone to join us for the Founders Reception after service in the King Chapel. We're also, we also invite you to stay for the launch of the Million Men Vote Initiative today. Yeah, Hillside, that's you. Hillside, launching the Million Men Vote Initiative this afternoon at 2 p.m. We have a number of speakers who will be with us speaking to the urgency of the moment. Our goal is to mobilize one million, say one million, one million black and brown men across the state of Georgia to get out and vote in the upcoming elections. We did it before. We did it before. We can do it again, right? Said we did it before. We can do it again. And I understand that, as it's been stated, that black men, brown men, we can be and will be the determining factor in the upcoming elections. So. Make sure that you're here. Go ahead and send your text right now. Get on your feet. Tell everybody you need to get here at 2 p.m. because something extraordinary is in store for you. All right, and that's, that's exciting. I'm so excited about it. Our voter information team will be available in the Soul Cafe to provide materials and information about registration and voting for the upcoming election. And the Fulton County Voter Commission is with us today as well. We bless them. They have the mobile out front. So you can get to experience the mobile, see what the voting process would be, would be like, how it would be, and even experience the voting machines. And they'll also be registering individuals to vote right in the Soul Cafe. Let's bless them this morning for being with us. They're going to be with us after service and at 2 p.m. as well. Plan to join us for our Truth and Reconciliation service next Sunday, September 18th, with our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Charles Steele Jr. from SELC, and guests gospel singer, actually she's a part of our community as well, evangelist Dorothy Norwood. So we're looking forward to that. Go ahead and get the word out. Plan to be here. Following that service, we will host the Equitable Dinner Luncheon in partnership with the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. And this is where we will learn more information about the 1906 Atlanta Race Massacre and how this history connects to systemic issues that we are facing today in the city. We can only accommodate 100 people. I don't know if we have any other. We're already full. The list, we have room. So if you're interested in attending, you'll get lunch by Church's Chicken. I know how y'all like Church's Chicken. Church's Chicken will provide the, uh, the lunch for the luncheon. And if you're interested, please sign up at the membership desk table right in the four, uh, Pool Road 48 after service. We still have room. 
All right. And how about, did anyone join us for pickleball yesterday? Pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. All of the pickleball people who showed up yesterday, come on, stand up. We even have hillside cheerleaders now. Where are the hillside cheerleaders? We want to say thank you. Thank you to Miss Brenda and to the 50 Plus Club Ministry for coordinating that. It was just absolutely extraordinary, fun event. We're looking to launch Pickleball here on the hill, establishing our own pickleball courts. How about that? Yes. We have so much to share. Um, and we're also so thankful. Did you receive your list, a handout today? We want to say thank you to all of those of you, all who are helping to support our 51st anniversary this year. You're helping to make it possible. You all know my intention is to always make available whatever good we can make available here in this ministry at no cost to the members. And because we have such wonderful, say wonderful, giving, say giving, supportive, say supportive, loving, say loving, committed, say committed, members who have chosen to become sponsors uh, for our anniversary. We're able to do that. And so we want to say thank you. And that list, you have that list before you. So just take a moment and bless each name on that list. And if you don't see your name on the list, there's still an opportunity for you to get your name on the list as well as a 51st anniversary sponsor. If you haven't already done so, please get the book Ubuntu, I and You and You and Me, written by Michael Battle, foreword by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We still have a few copies in the bookstore, and this is the, actually our theme for this year's anniversary. Truth and Treasures Bookstore is celebrating our 51st anniversary by offering 51% 50, discount, that's 51% discount on selected books and tapes. Many CDs and DVDs are available for only 51 cents. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the same thing. 51 cents. Make sure you stop by after service and get that. Discounts end on, end on Sunday, September 25th. Please extend your consciousness to those on our prayer, wellness, and transition list. Our longtime member, Zena Giles, mother of Najma Giles, made her transition. And Zena's service will be held here at Hillside on Saturday, September 17th at 1030 a.m. And for those of you who can come, we encourage you to do so. And if you, how many of you know, recall Zena? Zena. And so let's just bless her right now in spirit. For we understand in truth that spirit never dies, that Zena is an eternal forever presence now, basking, resting, abiding in God's great house of life. And so we bless you, Zena, on your journey. And we speak blessings over her family and all of us who love and hold her so near and dear in our hearts. So we thank you, God, for your spirit of comfort, for it is in your name and nature that we pray, and so it is. Remember, next Sunday at 2 p.m., Hillside's Choir will be hosting the 51st Anniversary Choir Concert. So plan to be here. Stay all day next Sunday as well. We're looking forward to it. Friends, this concludes our... Reminders, for more information, please stop by any of the TV monitors, scan the, uh, the QR code, or download the bulletin from our website. Now we will have music by the Hillside Choir.
so I am proud to have with me this young man. We've all seen him before. And he is Mr. Elliot Johnson, and he's going to bring us daily thoughts for children today. And he's saying hello to all the people <laughs> here inside the sanctuary and those who are joining us virtually. So we look forward to hearing your daily thoughts today. My name is Elliot Johnson, I am nine years old, and I am fifth grade, and I am going to be reading the Daily Press with me. Repeat the affirmation after me. Keep a mental record of good. Keep, Keep a, a mental, mental record, record of good. good. Keep, Keep a, a mental, mental record, record of good. good. Keep, Keep a, a mental, mental record, record of good. A lot of times, people think about bad things that has happened to them. Don't focus on that. Keep in your mind a record of all the good, kind, thoughtful, positive things that happen in your life. Then say, God, thank you for the good. Let all things be done decently and in order. First, Corinthians 14, verse 40. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. children are just spectacular and awesome and all of that. So thank you, Elliot, and thank you all who participate uh, with our youth ministry and, you know, they tell us to train up a child in the way he or she should go, and they will not depart from it. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, parents and grandparents, for all you're doing in Elliot's life. Let us turn to Sunday, September 11, 2022, our anniversary. Woo! It's our anniversary. You know, anniversaries are such a special time in our lives. It's a time of remembering. It's a time of celebrating. But it's also a time of predicting what is to come next. It's about moving forward. Not being stuck in the past, but celebrating the past. So let us read together our affirmation for today. I celebrate Hillside today. I celebrate Hillside today. I celebrate Hillside today. Today at Hillside International Truth Center, we formally celebrate a dream, a vision, and Bishop Dr. Barbara Lewis King's courage to say yes in the midst of a multitude of no's. We celebrate the lessons and blessings, the teachers, ministers, and many ministries, all board and staff members, all members and friends, all volunteers, and all it takes to keep our spiritual center thriving. I honor and celebrate our illustrious founder and leader, Dr. Barbara, and the influence of Hillside on my life. I honor the New Thought teachings that gave me life, restored me, and healed me. And it is reassuring to know I am not alone on my spiritual journey. I am grateful to participate in this global ministry, now led by the dynamic, inevitable, gifted, and talented Bishop Jack Bomar. I celebrate the thousands touched by this ministry. Thank you, order, in me, through me, as me, around me, through the Christ within, and so it is. Let's begin this by taking three deep breaths and closing out the outer. Anything that you came in with, any worries, any concerns. 
concerned. I don't know the, the knows it all. <laughs> you know, sometimes we worry about things that we left at home. So let's know that right here and right now is where we are and where we need to be and that our only time is now and it is precious. So let's begin by breathing deeply into our heart space and holding that breath. And I want you to think of a loving thought of Dr. Barbara King, a time when she touched your heart or something that she said. And I want you to hold that and then I want you to breathe it out in the universe, knowing that there is only one. There is only one ocean. <laughs> there is only one earth. There is only one human. We are all connected. We have this idea about division, but there is no division in so let us breathe in. Okay, let us take a second deep breath, breathing into our heart space, breathing in deeply. And I want you to think of another memory of love, of being here at Hillside in Georgia, Kentucky. Okay, and from our heart, let's breathe it out into the universe, breathing out. And one last deep breath. I want you to breathe in what you've experienced this morning. Because the presence of Bishop Dr. Barbara King is still here. That love is still here. That spirit is still here. So let's breathe in. about how you were touched with the, by these teachings, how you were touched by Dr. Barbara said, hey, thank you. You know how you were touched by someone in this congregation, how you made a friend here, how you may have met your significant other here. Think about those messages that we received and continue to receive in this space. Think about all of the people who come here to share their messages people like the honorable Doug Hackett who's been here many times and graced us Naeem Akbar, Michael Bedford you can go on and on Les Brown so think about those think about all of the good that you have received in your meditation as Elliot told us think on the good Keep a mental record of the good. So right now, I want you to work with a mental record of how Hillside has touched your life. How the teachings that Dr. Barbara brought here to us transformed your life or is transforming your life. Develop that mental record. Just take a couple of minutes to share.
for taking that moment to honor Dr. Barbara in your heart, to recognize the gift that she was to all of us, not, even, not just people inside this building, but through, all through Atlanta, through the world. Think about how she always brought us the best. Think about how she was broad in her scope of what spirituality means. Think about the ways that she encouraged us with her sermons. Think about the many gifts that she gave us from her heart. Think about the struggle she went through and didn't give up, God. Think about, God, how she showed us how to walk tall. And think about the way that she taught us not to be old, not to get decrepit, just to move forward. Thank you for the way that she told us to expand our minds and our hearts, God. Thank you for allowing her to transform our lives, God, and the gift that we can give her this day. The gift that we can give her this day is our memory this day is to keep on keeping on, to keep on transforming, to keep on expanding our minds and our hearts to be all that we can be. Let there be no mental blocks for us. Let us remember that we stand on the shoulders of giants. We give thanks this day, God. We give thanks for bringing Bishop Dr. Barbara into our lives. We thank you for her stories, her sermons, her smile, the gleam in her eye. We thank you for her boldness and her courage that said to us, be who you are. Be who you are. Don't try to be anybody else. Live your life. Be who you are. So we give thanks this day for all of our precious memories. We even give thanks for the chastisement that gave us instructions on how to be better in our lives and how to do better. And we give thanks for the order that she always maintained. She always wanted the best. Sometimes we want the best just for ourselves, but she wanted the best for all of us. So we give thanks this day for that gift of love, that gift of celebration, that gift of just being free, loving life, loving life. And we know that she loved life and she showed us how to love life. So on this day, we take her with us. This is a day to remember, but it's also a day to move forward. So let us continue to move forward by honoring her memory, by supporting her vision that is through our Bishop Jack Bomar. Thank you, God, for his life and what he's bringing forth, God. Let us continue to honor her by supporting this ministry in the best way that we can. And let us continue her memory, her spirit, by living our very, very, very best life. Amen. Amen. Ashe. And so it is.
of the Hillside Choir singing, You're the Lifter. And then we will hear from our illustrious speaker, Doug Fletcher Ashton.
didn't move you, you're going to check your pulse. Whoa. What a joy. What a joy to be in this place on this Sunday morning. 11th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022 as we celebrate the 51st anniversary of the founding of this church and we celebrate the brilliant leader that brought us to this place there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place and I know I don't think about it I didn't read about it I know because I know that it's the presence of the Lord and it is the presence of a pervasive spirit of Bishop Dr. Barbara Lewis King that will always be with us, even though she has transitioned, her spirit lives on. And although we mourned her loss, we all did, we have to celebrate the fact that God gave it to us in the first place. A gift, a gift, a gift, a gift to the world. The Lord has done great things for us, wherefore we are joyful. Psalms 126, third piece of that. How appropriate that that should be the passage this morning in the reading. And so to Bishop Dr. Jack and to the members of Hillside and to all of you, my brothers and sisters, People have thanked me for being here, but it is my privilege, it is my blessing to be in this place this morning. I was emotional when I walked through the door because I'm not a stranger here. And I thank you for inviting me to share in what is a celebration, a celebration of Founders Day. And so we pay honor to our dear Bishop Dr. King, whose foundation for this ministry began with a Bible study place. Twelve folk, twelve folk, twelve folk. Just like Jesus had the twelve disciples. She gathered twelve folk. And from there, she built this ministry. She built a ministry against all odds. She had been trained as a social worker. She had been a professor at CAU. She had been the dean of students at Spelman College, but God gave her another assignment. And he put on her heart that this should be the place that would transform lives in a way that will live for generations. Let me stop on a personal note and say that the late Willie Boyd Sattler I'm going to tear up and I don't know if Bill's here this morning, her son is here Aunt Mac is what I affectionately called her. And she referred to me as the daughter she never gave birth to. And she was literally, Bishop Jack, she was literally at the hospital the morning I was born. That's how far back we go. Her husband was my daddy's best friend. They met Sam at AU in graduate school working on their MBA and became lifelong friends. In fact, he was with my daddy when he first saw my mom. That's how far back they go. And my mom and my daddy met at AU, and thank God they 
met and married and made Atlanta home, and so this is home for me. And so I thank God for her and her family and what they've meant to me. And I want to thank God for Felicia. Felicia Moore, who has served this community for decades, a servant leader. And we owe her thanks. Bill Allen, for showing black entrepreneurs what a level of standard looks like. Black Wall Street. So many of you I know if I stop to call by name, but Sam, you know I have to call you by name. Sam is Mr. CAU. He does, he's also, he's, he has this great title of vice president and all that good stuff at development at CAU, but he does everything at CAU, let me just tell you. But Sam has meant so much to me and to my family. He loved my mama and my daddy, and has been with us through the darkest and the most joyful times. So I just, just wish I could hug all the people I know in here, but I got stuff to say, and I am black and Baptist and with a law degree, and that's a description for being long-winded, but I'm not gonna be long-winded with him. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. And so, to all of you, I'm grateful. And I will say to you that we ought to say, and as you have heard in the meditation and everybody, what has everybody's already said this morning, I want us to be mindful this morning that our lives intersected with Bishop yeah, Dr. Yeah. Robert. That out of the billions of people, who have lived on this earth. I'm gonna give you these. You know I'm gonna walk around. Who've lived on this earth, that God fixed it, that our lives would intersect with hers. And if that's not shouting news, I don't know what is. And so we give thanks for that. We give thanks for her life because we were touched and we were transformed because she lived. And she lived her purpose and her passion through her global ministry and her love for God's people. And as much as I am tempted to talk about her for the rest of the time I have this morning and to talk about what she meant to me personally, how she has been there for me over and over and over during the darkest times of my life how she has been there for me through the joyful times of my life. I believe that she would rather me use this time this morning to remind us what she taught us. And I believe that the best way that we can celebrate her and the anniversary of this institution is to challenge us to live and support the magnificent ministry that literally reached beyond these walls throughout the world. Yeah. I think that that's what Dr. Barber would expect of me this morning. And so I am reminded of what Mother Teresa said, we must be the change that we want to see in the world. And what Dr. King taught us when he said that the measure of a man, and I'm going to add a man and a woman, is not where he or she stands in the times of comfort and convenience, but rather where we stand in the times of challenge and controversy. That is probably my favorite quote from Dr. King. Because we can get comfortable. We can say, oh yeah, well, you know, it, it, everything is okay. But if the world is not right, if the people that we are interfacing with are not right, and things are going astray, then we got to be clear about who we are and where we stand. And so my topic this morning simply is where you're going to be standing when the new day comes. That's from Sweet Honey in the Rock for folks who old as I am. And folk songs, Sweet Honey in the Rock, where you're going to be standing 
when the new day comes. You can't straddle the fence, Sam. You know, as hard as you've been working to keep CAU a thriving institution, we cannot straddle the fence. We've got to be clear about where we're going to be standing. And Brother Terrence, I just looked over and saw you this morning. I'm so grateful to have you and Brother from the nation this morning. Thank you. It's great. It is great to see you. I've known Brother Terrence for a long time. He saw me in the pocket line. He said, oh, Judge, you, you there? I said, oh, I got some stuff to do. I'll be back. And so I'm grateful that you'll be back, that you're back. It is an understatement to say that we're living in some challenging times, times that we've never seen before. In addition to this global pandemic, the divisiveness, the hatred that is going on in this country, it's a toxic. We've got a US Supreme Court that appears to have become politicized. A Congress so divided that the good of the people is not their priority anymore. A voting rights is severely compromised, and I'm going to go back to that in just a minute. We're in the richest nation on the face of the globe. The Children's Defense Fund reports that at least eight children on average die every day in this country directly as a result of poverty. A child ought not die because he or she was born poor. How dare this happen? And so I'm going to talk briefly about the state of children in America. I want you to know that 19%, nearly 20% of all children in Georgia are poor. Disproportionately, and I'm concerned about all children, you know me, you know my heart, but disproportionately, 28% of all black children are poor. 27% of Hispanic children are poor. 9% of white children are poor in Georgia. 8% of children in Georgia are extremely poor. That means that their, income, their family's income is below half of the poverty line. 20% of children in Georgia under six are poor. And what strikes me too is that there are nearly 40,000 children who are reported as being homeless in, Atlanta, in the Georgia public school system. Those are the children we know about. We don't know about the children who've been lost, who we don't have any idea of where they are, who went on virtual online learning during COVID and just got lost. We already had children struggling in this nation, in our public schools, and now we don't know where some of them are. What happens? What does that mean for them going forward? And I'm going to tell you particularly, I'm going to tell you why this is particularly important. 83% of black children in Georgia can't read on the first fourth grade level in 2019. You hear me? 83%. It gets only slightly better. 82% can't read on ninth grade level when they get there. Why is that important? Because our children need to graduate from school. If you don't graduate from school, the US Department of Justice says that you are three times, three and a half times more likely to have a criminal record. Seven times more likely to, to have children that will drop out of school, it can, it's generational. And seven and a half times more likely to be dependent on welfare. And then the stats go on and on and on, and they aren't better when you look at the nation, but Georgia is behind. We're behind in so many categories. But I want you to also think about how many of our children are graduating. Only 79% of our children are graduating from high school. What does that mean for the other children? Where, where are they? And I am concerned that because of the pandemic, that these numbers are going to get worse. And I have so many stats, and I'm not going to go on and on and on and on and on and on, but gun violence. Too many folk are dying because of guns. And we need to have people in the local, state, and federal level who've got the guts to call it like it is. You don't need an AK 
seven, nine, or whatever the number is. You don't need that. And when people come into our schools and mow down children, helpless children, while the guard outside, let him in. What is the world is going on? And too many of our black men are dying at the hands of police in this nation. I represented Philando Castile's family. We've been so many. That was the one in Minnesota where the girlfriend live streamed. Bishop Jack, he had been stopped 52 times. He was only 32 years old in that one community, 52 times. You hear me? Talk about driving while black. They said his light tail was out. It wasn't out. 52 times. He's only been driving 66. He had only been living in that community for less than 10 years. How can you get stopped 52 times? But it matters who's in charge, because I went to Loretta Lynch. I went all the way to Loretta Lynch, Brother Tim. And I said, look. This is not okay. In fact, it's really bad. And so because of who's in office, she implemented a three-year study to look at racial profiling in the entire state of Minnesota. There had never been a police officer ever indicted in the history of the state until I kept fighting. And so, well, Judge, we've never done it before. I said, the fact that you haven't done it before doesn't mean it's right. You got to push for what is right. Do you all believe that we incarcerate more people in America than any other country in the world? Would you believe that it's one in every five people who's in prison in the world is in the US? I work in the system. I still find that hard to believe. And even though we make up less than 18% of the population, we make up nearly the majority of prison beds occupied by people who look like us. Things have got to change. Let me share this with you, and I'm not going to be long. Let me share this with you because this is very important. The Justice Department did a study that said that all black babies, male babies, all black male babies born in the year 2000, that one in three, Bill, that's what they said, one in three would end up in prison at some point in his lifetime. We're not talking about statistics. Hey, Bill, that's my, <laughs> old, that's my oldest friend in the world. Bill, I didn't see you earlier. That's Aunt Mac and Uncle Al's son I was telling you about. One in three. We're not talking statistics. We're talking about our sons, our brothers, our spouses, our nephews, our uncles, our church members, our coworkers, our neighbors. One in three. That is what the prediction is. Think about that. One, two, three. One, two, three. And when I've come to say the hillside, and when I think, Dr. Barbara would have me say this morning, is that that might be the prediction, but it cannot be our reality. It cannot. It cannot. It must not be our reality. And if Christians aren't willing, and people of faith, of all faiths, aren't willing to stand in the gap, then, how will it change? So I've come to challenge us this morning. I've come to challenge us this morning. I got a lot more to say, but I'm just going to say I'm challenging us this morning. Because if we, people of all faiths, don't figure out how we get it's not going to get better. And so what do we do? What do we do 
Sam, when we know that we've got more black men in prison than we have in college. I am not willing to give up. I don't believe that we as a people survive the horrible atrocities of slavery, the often hollow promises of a segregated society, the often more hollow promises of affirmative action, for us to get to here in this place at this time in the history of the universe, for us to give up. And so we've got to figure out. And the disparities go on and on and on and on with health and education, and housing, and jobs, and it just goes on and on and on. And one point about health, and I could do the whole thing just on health, but black women are dying three to four times more often after childbirth than anybody else. And you know why this strikes home, Bill, because I buried my daughter, perfectly healthy, in a world-class hospital, let her hemorrhage to death. They had an 18 year old, 18 month old, and a brand new baby. How do you explain to a baby, to an 18 month old, when he's looking for his mom? Or he comes in your room when he's two, because they live with me for a while, and he says, Grandma G, do you have my mommy's cell phone? And I said, sweetie, no, you woke up in the middle of the night. I said, no, sweetie, I don't. And he said, well, Grandma G, I need you to find it. He wasn't three yet. I said, I need you to find it because I need to, we need to call God and tell him to let mommy come home. She would have had better chances of surviving, Felicia, if she had been giving birth in a third world country. The number of black women who are dying. Is that my signal to shut up? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't want the hook to come out. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> okay, so what must we do? Top of my list, we gotta vote. We gotta vote, we gotta vote, we gotta vote. Oh. Not just in presidential elections. We gotta vote every time the poll opens for every election. We gotta vote for school board members and city elections and state elections and federal elections because what happens is that so much of what controls our day-to-day -day lives happens under the gold dome. And if we aren't voting, which is why I'm, so, I'm staying to two o'clock today, I'm staying because I support the initiative, Bishop Jack, on one million black and brown men to the polls. We can do this. We did it in 2020. We can do it in 2022, and we better do it in 2024. It's no shame if you know somebody who ain't registered, just tell them to get registered, right? I had to tell y'all quickly. Okay, you gonna start playing those chords again? Y'all are never gonna invite me back. When Barack first ran, I'll tell you all a secret, I actually temporarily resigned my title as judge to get out on the road. I travel all over the country. Remember when they said that, they said Michelle had said something about she didn't love the country? That's not what she meant. But they had to start pulling her back and they still would judge, they expected Michelle, but they won't be mad if you show up. I'm thinking, yes, they will be mad if I show up. <laughs> they expected Michelle, right? So I stood in for her on a lot of that. I found people, I would go to the housing project, this is a good story, and Gary and Diana, and they were walking with me in the 
in the um, doing canvassing, right? And so I knock on doors and I say, hey, this is Judge Hatchett. I came to get you on the bus to go. I'm going to go with you to go register the vote. Get away from my blankety blank door. You ain't no Judge Hatchett. <laughs> true, true. That's a true story. True story. I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, right? So after I convinced the one lady, then she would go to everybody, she would start hollering down the street, this is really Judge Hatchett, come on out here. So it was like the Pied Piper. I had a whole bunch of people. I was getting people on the little bus. We had like the short bus, you know, had people on the bus and riding, riding on the thing. And so this guy said to me, he said, Judge, I am, I think he was 77. He said, I've never voted a day in my life. But I'm voting now. And so it is that kind of empowerment, it is that kind of commitment that is going to take. Because we saw what happened in 2016, because if we had gone to vote in Georgia, just us black folk, it would have made a huge difference. Let me share this with you quickly. Never since the Voting Rights Act in 1965 have we seen an assault on voting rights. Between January 1st and December 7th, of 2021, 19 states, are y'all ready? 19 states, including Georgia, have passed 36 new laws. And I don't have time to go into all of these, but trust me, they are all very restrictive. They are designed to make it harder. You know why? Because in 2020, we voted in numbers, I have the numbers, 30 nearly 30% of black voters cast their vote by mail. And they were like, wait a minute. This is, this, ah, right? That's why it matters who's under the gold dome because these are where these laws are being made, all right? And so we have less drop-off boxes. It's harder to get a mail-in ballot. You've got to have different kind of ID. It's all designed to make it harder for us to vote. So I'm running along. We've got to think about where our priorities are. We're building prisons. It is true that we build prisons based on the number of problems that we're seeing with children as early as elementary school. Well, if we know there's a problem, why are we fixing it? Why, why, what's, what's that about? So pay attention to who's on these school boards in these school boards elections and demand, these are your taxes, and demand that we have quality education for all of our children, not just the, the rich kids on the north side. Right. And let's do what we can where we can. And maybe when you send your child or your grandchild to camp next summer, that maybe you write a check for a child whose parents don't have a checkbook. Amen. You know, maybe you coach literally team so that our children are running bases and not running drugs for drug dealers. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about because I've seen this on the bench day in and day out. I know the, the problems. And so let me just close quickly. We must stand for those who cannot stand for themselves yet. And the operative word is yet. Because effective advocacy means that we must work so that others will be empowered to stand for themselves and for others. We must raise our voices for those who cannot speak for themselves yet. We must stand in the gap to the storms, to the challenging times that face so many in this community, and we must be diligent in working to bridge the gap from uncertain times to a more secure future for our men, for our children, and for our women in this community. And we've got to guarantee them safe passage. Isn't that what Dr. King believed and envisioned when he talked about the beloved community? When he talked about a dream but we know too many people who are living a nightmare. Isn't that what our beloved Bishop Dr. Barbara Lewis King taught us? Believed in and loved us so that we would not hoard these blessings, but that we would pass them on. And if we are committed to doing what we can when we can, as best we can, then we're not just doing it for this generation of people. We're making a wonderful head start on their children's 
children's children's children's children. And I cannot think a more important work than to say that something you did, that I did, made a difference and lives beyond our lifetime. Isn't that what Dr. Barbara would expect? As we celebrate her and celebrate this anniversary, isn't that what she expects? I don't know what your passion is, I don't know what your purpose is, but there is something that you are able to give and that we must lift as we climb that it's not just about us, it is about us collectively. Isn't that what she taught us? And so in closing, I'm closing this, I just want to show you. I'm I'm going to tell you a quick story, and I promise you I'm finished. Yeah, I'm going to get over there. You know, I grew up in the choir now. I can come over there now. I, I, grew, I grew up in the choir. All right, I, I can, yeah. I grew up in the choir. Don't play me cheap. I might get over there on the keyboard before it's over. So, I know. You know me. You know how crazy I am. You know, I know, I know. Um, in closing, I want to tell you this story, and I promise I'm through. When I was, the Sunday before I was supposed to go to college, to leave to go to college, you know, I couldn't tell my mom and daddy I had to pack. I mean, that wasn't going to work. My daddy was a deacon. My mama was a trustee. I was in church every time the doors opened. Choir, usher, Lord, everything, you know, all of that. And so this, that Sunday after church, Mother Odessa Duncan, and see, I love telling this story to black folk because they know what the mother's board is, right? You tell us the white folks, they be looking at you as a mother's board, what? <laughs> so, Mother Odessa Duncan came up to me. Does anybody have a real handkerchief? I'm just up here doing this with this tissue. No, okay, all right. Mate, you got, you got a handkerchief? I knew, I knew I could depend on you, mate. So, the Sunday before I left to go to college, mate, is that, is that handkerchief clean? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you, mate. This is my guy. I tell you, this is my oldest friend in the world. I give it back, I promise. Love you. Oh, I love you too. Okay, so, so Sunday before college, I was leaving to go to college. Um, Mother Odessa Duncan, at the end of church service, came up to me, and she had nodded. You know, she had nodded four silver half dollars in each of the four corners. You with me? Yes. And you know that handkerchief had a red embroidered rose, y'all know, in the corner. Everybody knows, right? And she took that handkerchief and she reached for my hand and she put that handkerchief in the center of my palm and she squeezed my fingers tight over that handkerchief. And this is what she said. She said, baby, you run on. I can't go where you're going. Yes, ma'am. I can't go where you're going. I don't know how far she went, Brother Terrence, in, in school. I don't even know that she even finished high school. She'd worked all of her life as a domestic. But see, she prayed for me. She prayed for us. It's a whole generation of men and women who couldn't get to where we were going. But she, she prayed. They prayed for us. And so, I've never forgotten that. Baby, So what that means is that you can't get tired. You can't say, I don't want this assignment. You got to keep running on. Because, see, she was part of a generation that couldn't have possibly seen what my life was going to be like.
And so for folks who don't understand Bishop Jack, and who say, but it was just $2. All right. <laughs> they don't understand. Yeah. Cause see, those four silver hot dollars yeah. represent a wealth that you can't measure. Because what she was saying is, baby, I have seen the hard times. I have been through the valley. I have seen the worst days of a segregated South. But baby, you run on. And so it's like an intergenerational relay, mate. You know, when you got that baton, she had the baton, and then she ran her leg in the race. And then when she got to the point where she said, baby, She hands it off. And so it's on us to run this leg of the race with dignity and determination because we are called on that when we hand it off, we hand it off at a higher ground than when we got it. Isn't that what Dr. Brahma would expect? Isn't that what she taught us? Baby, run off. Oh, let's give it to her. Put it on her. Put, come on, Hillside. Oh, my God. Put it on her. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray for me. Somebody pray. Do you see it? Somebody prayed for me. I'm so glad. Got my religion on time. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh, give it to her. Let's just send our hands to Judge Hatchet. What a message. And as you pour it out today, I want you to pour on, pour into her. Speak blessings over her life. Hillside, you know what to do. Begin to speak blessings. Blessings of health and prosperity, guidance and protection, direction. Blessings of all of the good that God has in store for Judge Glenda Hatchett. In her going out and in her coming in. In her uprising and in her lying down. We speak the city blessing and the country blessing. We speak the courthouse blessing and the White House blessing and the other houses that wherever you go, God shall use you to do great and mighty things. Thank you, God, for Judge Glenda Hatchett. Thank you, God, for Judge Glenda Hatchett. And so it is. Bless her real good. I'm so Oh, my goodness. That's pretty good. Come on, somebody pray. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Had me on their mind. Took the time. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad they prayed for me. We're happy to have Brother Terrence Muhammad from the Nation of Islam and his other, other brother. Bless him this morning. It's a joy. At this time, I want you to consider your gifts and your blessings, however you came prepared to give. Take your gifts in your hand as we bless it together and bring it to the heart. For our online family, we thank God for you as well as you receive that you sow into this fertile soil. Let's speak this blessing as we affirm together. There is no lack or limitation in my life. Freely I give, freely I receive from the storehouse of God. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies this offering. It blesses me as the giver, blesses Hillside as the receiver, and returns to me blessed and multiplied. Thank you, God, in me, through me, as me, around me, through the Christ within, and so it is, and that's a hallelujah.
We encourage you to leave your offerings in any of the giving stations before you leave. Thank you once again for being here, being with us today. Remember, we will host our founders reception after service, after service in the King Chapel. Back in here at what time? 2 p.m. for what? The Million Men Vote right here at Hillside. Let's stand as we prepare to close. Thank you, visitors, for being with us once again. I believe we have gifts for all of the, all of the ladies today. Is that correct? Ushers, do you have those gifts? I believe we have gifts for all of the women. Sergeant Robinson, can you run to the office and get those flowers, roses that the nation provided, please? Let's bless our children, our youth here today as we give thanks for them. Judge Hatchett will be in the King Chapel after service. Ministers, feel free to join us up here if you would like. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we join hands, we affirm this blessing together until we meet again which will be at 2 p.m. today. Thank you, Mr. Allen, for being with us today. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever you are, God is. Thank you, God. In me, through me, as me, around me, through the Christ within, and so it is. Amen. God bless you. Peace and blessings. See you at 2 p.m.